fixing Windows networking is one of those things where it's maddening for a newbie to Windows or someone that doesn't necessarily know the inner workings of Windows because a couple little things can make it to where it just won't work at all for you. So let's get on the desktop. I'm going to go through all the common ways I actually share Windows. You can use this on all Windows versions out there. And it really hasn't changed much in the past 20 years. It's just they've added a couple things and uh, really messed things up during the Vista to Windows 7 era, believe it or not. And uh, it's only proceeded from there. So on our desktop, we have a little article I wrote, a couple cheat sheets, because there's some things we're going to be using. Yes, we're going to be using PowerShell again. PowerShell is our friend in Windows because we can get to any setting anywhere and change anything. So learn it. It is really amazing. So there's a couple ways we can first tackle our networking sharing solution. Now, most people are tempted to come into just Windows settings. With Windows 10 and Windows 11, you don't really get much of a overview. It looks pretty. I'll give them that but actually knowing, hey, what's going on here? And then you also have firewall. But what I like to do is actually look at the old version as well, just to compare. You can actually go right click, run, and just type control. And hey, this is the old Windows 7 one, right? Just go networking and sharing center. And you can kind of see, hey, this is on a public network now. I'm not gonna be able to share. Other things in here is the advanced uh, sharing options. So go advanced sharing options. This actually takes it over here. They've removed it on this version of Windows where that used to be uh, in that uh, panel. So they're slowly stripping away all this and adding it into the new GUI of Windows 11. Windows 10 people, don't worry, they won't ever fix it. So you could actually still see it in the old panel. Now in here, you can say network discovery. Do you want this computer discovered from other things? Yes. If you wanted to share, you'd want to actually turn that on. And then you would just look at all these. Now, obviously, since we're in public, even with these on, you're still going to have problems on a public network because it just does not like sharing files. You also have password protected sharing. This means you have to have a password to sign into your computer. If you don't have a password, then Obviously, if password protected sharing is on, your sharing is going to be broken forever until you fix it or set a password for that user. So if you use password protected sharing, which you probably should for security reasons, uh, or if you're on a closed network, you could turn this off. But just know you do need the username and the login information. And honestly, this has actually gotten easier in recent years with Microsoft accounts because most people use Microsoft accounts to log in. Sadly, uh, I don't <laughs> I still use local accounts because I'm a creature of habit. But if you do use a Microsoft account, like many Windows users of today, it's actually easier because you just put your email address that you use to sign in and then the password to log into this computer from any other computer. So that can be good. To me, I still view it as a little bit of a security flaw because if someone gets your Microsoft account, you're just kind of hosed at that point. But Needless to say, this is the big thing is the private networks, because this is what you should be on for uh, sharing and you would need network discovery on. You can set up network connected devices automatically, and then you'd want file and printer sharing on for this system. So these are the settings you need under advanced settings, and then you might turn off password protected sharing if you don't have a password for your account like I don't here. So these are the advanced sharing settings, that's good. But if we look back on our sharing center, which I'm gonna just pull that up, we're gonna use the old way. You can still see we're a public network. And if we go through the new settings, let's say this is grayed out, how would we get to it? What's the PowerShell equivalent? Now I know most people are like, God, Titus, you're always talking about PowerShell. Because it's so nice when Microsoft locks you out of changing things in Windows, you can still get to it a lot of times through PowerShell. So I like to teach that uh, this specific command is a good one just to get your network connection profile. This tells you, hey, what interface you're using. Uh, that's the interface names just called network. A lot of times it's like network three or network four, depending on how many cards or times you've reloaded your system and those types of things. Uh, so this usually has a number after it. Uh, also pay attention to network categories. 
this is where we could hard change it from a public network to a private network should we ever get locked out. And on my little guide here on the website, we could actually just do this right here. This is the syntax. So I'll probably just grab this first part and we're just going to put that in here. We'll just right click the paste and we're just going to call this network. And then I believe the network category is the next one dash network category. And then we just call this private. So with that, we'll run get network profile. Hey, it's set to private. If we look at settings, this is actually not reflected yet, but I bet if we go back in, oh, look at that, it's on private. So this is a way to get around if the settings ever lock you out to make sure you get it in a private network and set it all up. So now that we've done that, how do we share folders? That's the easiest part, really. I usually just do it the simplest way is just going directly to the folder. Let's say I wanna share my documents folder. I'll just, or let's say I wanna share GitHub. I'll just come in here and right click the folder and hit properties. And then just go to sharing and then from sharing hey it is shared it's shared under the, this network path so if i type this in from somewhere else it'll be there and we turned off password protected sharing so we should be able to hit this but if we look at security you also kind of want to see hey what is, who's allowed to use this this is where it gets a little tricky with windows permissions you can see the folder is shared but if you hit this from another box you could probably use subscribe because I don't really have a password so much to that, but most other people get completely locked out. So how do we open it up for everyone else is the next thing. And the easiest way is either just to add everyone here, which there's an actual user called everyone, basically that opens up that share to everyone, or you could just right click, give access to, and then you can just say specific people. Uh, the give access to command is pretty awesome. Let's just go properties. We're going to do it the long way. Usually you just do give access to and that would work, but I think I messed up my context menus messing around like I do. Uh, but we usually we just come in here, do everyone and then full control to read and write and execute stuff from here. So we'll hit apply. So this whole folder is now wide open under GitHub, but you'll notice like share X is probably shared. And if we go into sharing, you can see it's shared. But if we go to security, it's a folder by folder permissions. And this is kind of where SMB shines is these really granular permissions. I think it's pretty easy for this side of things now that you know that everyone and the password sharing and the private and public networks. But is it the best protocol? And it's actually the worst protocol. I absolutely hate sharing and using Windows sharing services when I'm not in a business. Usually I control all this from a domain and it's fine, but for home users, I really like NFS. I made a video about NFS. Uh, I'll try and link it above, but check that out. If you just want wide open sharing and you want the fastest speeds possible, or let's say you want to uh, edit videos on your Final Cut Pro, uh, sharing through a NAS, use NFS, don't use SMB. SMB is widely used where it shouldn't be used. And I just wanna leave you with that tidbit of information. SMB is my last resort of a sharing protocol. But for those Windows users out there that just wanna go Windows to Windows, yeah, it's kind of what you use. I mean, you could use NFS, but it would be a bit cumbersome to set up. So here you go.